It's Sunday night, and it's Tom Antion live from Virginia Beach. Oh, great day today. Got a lot of work done. Um, made some trips to town, played with the dogs. Uh, it's a nice life around here, I'll, I'll tell you that. The weather was nice, a little chilly today, but uh, pretty pretty nice. Uh, had some thunderstorms yesterday, but nothing... Uh, Nothing to hold me back. So, uh, you all know the story. Uh, those of you that aren't consumed with celebrities with the Oscars, uh, go ahead and say hello there. Put some comments in. Give me your uh, website, and I'll give you a shout out. Uh, tell me where you're checking in from. I can never remember. Uh, a lot of you are here every week, and I still can't remember. <laughs> uh yeah, I appreciate whoever just shared it. Uh, I hope it's running now because I don't see any uh, numbers up there. Yeah, so put a comment in there if this is actually working. Yeah, okay, I see some uh, some people coming in. Yeah, so, um, yeah, before I get started, please let me know it's working here because uh, this uh, Facebook Live is, you know, it's not, not, it's not, uh, Without bugs, put it that way. So, um, oh, good. So we do see somebody here. Mary Lee's here. Hi, Mary Lee. How are you? And who else is here? Put a comment in there. Hit your share button. Uh, all, all those people that aren't wor watching the Oscars or they're watching them in one eye and watching this in the other eye, we'll, we're fine. <laughs> good. It's working. All right. Great. So, uh, our fake sponsor, hey Alan, how are you? Our fake sponsor tonight is Bear Claw Back Scratchers. This is a famous back uh, scratcher, very handy device. You'd say, well, how the heck, Tom, that's pretty short for, it's like a spoon. Hey Chuck, how are you? <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> Just bullshit. <laughs> We're not talking about anything important. Uh, oh, we've got lots of topics, Chuck, all the time. But uh, now we're talking about our fake sponsor. And just to be clear, these people are not sponsoring us. Uh, yes, uh, Alan put out a Sunday uh, tip on preemptive strike, so that's a good thing. But anyway, this is a bear claw, and it's kind of short for a back scratcher, but it's expandable. You could actually use it for a weapon, but it's kind of flimsy. Although I would not want to get hit with it, tell you tell you that. And um, so that's our fake sponsor for tonight. Um, they were going to sponsor the Oscars, but they decided to fake sponsor me first. <laughs> all right, so, so all right, let's see what's coming up in the, today's episode. Um, in the news, we got lots of news. How about a hundred-year-old strip tease? What do you think about that? Hey, John. JohnAbbott.com. Uh, let's see. On the scams, you uh, you want to be a VIP? Be careful. Uh, brutal self-defense, I want you to go with the flow. Don't resist. Uh, that doesn't mean just give up and let people rob you. This is, means uh, a technique that I want you to practice. In the Internet uh, section, I'm going to help you help me to help you. How about that? And let's see, the speaking tip, let's have a duel. And the a-hole of the week, we're going to talk about some fucked up professors. <laughs> All right. And got uh, th three heroes of the week this time. Baby, oh baby, you're going to love this guy and you're going to love this dog. All right. So let's see, let's get into the weight loss thing. So we started out at 44 pounds, then 45, then 49, then 50, then 51, then 52, then last week 54, this week 54 again. <laughs> so, now I call that a win, folks. If I don't gain weight, stay the same, that's a win, and I'm really getting great habits built up, I'll tell you. Uh, oh, look who's here, Stephanie Frank. Now make sure you're dressed, Stephanie, because uh, this is a... Uh, only a, an R-rated show, not an X-rated show. <laughs> Stephanie Frank is a, is a great friend of mine, goes way, way back. And she's doing her first Facebook Live 
on uh, Monday, I think it is. Stephanie, put the comment in there. Tell us about it so we give you a shout out. Give you a little, uh, she's got her white jeans on. This girl knows how to wear a pair of jeans. I could tell you that. <laughs> and that's what all us guys would say about her when we see her at conventions, but we weren't allowed to say it <laughs> out loud. But now that I'm hiding behind this Facebook Live, I can get away with murder. Um, but anyway, tell, tell me some details. So uh, if people want to uh, check in, uh, they can uh, check in and, and see your uh, first Facebook Live she's doing. I don't know what it's about. All I know is uh, she used to be an ethical hacker. Uh, she's taking a blind man to the Cubs game. He's never seen one. I don't know if that's a joke or, <laughs> or what. It's a sick one if it is. Hey, David, how are you? Uh, so uh, I guess you're going to do a Facebook Live from the Cubs game. Uh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, if, uh, someone that's uh, blind, and uh, that would be you know, really nice of you to do so. Um, not a joke. All right. Hey, Barbara Ann, how are you? I think she's from Maine. Am I right this time? Uh, uh, beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. What time is it going to be, uh, Steph? All right. So let's see what else we got here. Uh, Travis is still sick, very sick. Um, so he's getting better. Hopefully he'll be, uh, yep, I got it right this time. Uh, Barbara. I uh, hope he's getting uh, better because uh, he's kind of the ramrod behind selfie stupidity. Uh, we've been wanting to roll that. I wanted to roll that out at the end of January. Uh, 2 p.m. Mountain. Check every uh, Everybody check this. This Stephanie is one of the most wonderful ethical people I know in the world. I wish she lived closer to me um, so we get together more often. Um, and I don't say that about very many people anymore. I'll tell you what, I've been dis disappointed by some of the best. All right, so uh, never by her. Hey, Tim, how are you? Uh, great. Uh, oh, don't forget to put your websites in there, folks, so I can give you a shout out. Uh, let's see. So anyway, uh, and also the new viral marketing. Uh, yeah, I love you too, Steph. Uh, hey, Richard, how are you? Nice for you to stop in. Uh, the new viral marketing book is uh, getting that close, so that's good. And uh, our subscriber contest will be coming soon. All right. So let's uh, see what we're going to get into. Let's get into the mailbag here. Art wants to know, what's your favorite paid traffic source? Uh, clearly, it's Facebook. Uh, although, as I, I, I think I outlined a couple weeks ago, you know, Facebook does some scummy things. But they just have so many features with uh, look-alike audiences and, and things like that that uh, it's hard to pass them up. If you can get a return on investment or if you can just break even um, on your ads, you're ahead. Uh, hey, Richard, how are you, man? So uh, it's definitely Facebook above all, all else because of all the audiences that you can do. And you can go by interest with people. Uh, you could target so precisely. Uh, that's one of the reasons I like it. Hey, Keith, how are you, man? Uh, Helen wants to know, in, my, in her kickboxing class, they're teaching us to punch. I thought you said not to punch. Well, um, yeah, howdy there, Keith. Well, yeah, what we don't want you to do is punch with your knuckles. And I know that's what they're teaching you because it's just, a, you know, it's not people doing real stuff. It's just playing and exercising, which I'm all for. But, you know, you can't uh, relate those kickboxing classes to the real world. Uh, um, so we never do this. I mean, because if you ever saw a close-up of my knuckles from teeth marks in them before I learned better... Uh, and also, you know, if I break my hand, my gun is not available to me anymore. I'd have to go weak-sided, which is way difficult compared to strong side hands. And so, um, no, we use open fist. Now, if you are going to use a fist, we can use a, a hammer fist. See, it doesn't involve the knuckles. And you must turn it a little bit to put this pad on the striking point. Not this bone. That hurts. Um... Uh, yeah, Alan says, uh, Alan's my cohort in crime here. He's a, a fifth Dan Hopkido expert, and he's my partner in my brutal self-defense class and uh, from surviveanddefend.com. So go over there and get signed up for his free newsletter. 
But hammer fist and palm heel strikes are much better to protect your own hands. So you can hit this way, you can hit this way, you can hit this way. Uh, I would avoid this unless you practice because, you know, too many people hit with their fingers and hurt their fingers. You got to, you know, stiffen the hand and hit with this. So <clears throat> go through the motions. But, you know, they probably won't even notice or care if you, instead of doing this, if you do this. I'd rather see you doing hundreds and hundreds of reps of this. That way, in a real shit hits the fan, you're going to not re resort to the wrong thing. All right. Barry says, I saw your pizza on Facebook. Could you send me? <laughs> no, I actually had a pizza shop a long time ago, uh, Barry, but I can't send you one, unfortunately. Maybe uh, someday they'll be able to do that. But uh, uh, for those of you wondering what that's about, I've been on this low-carb diet, down 54 pounds and just sailing. Uh, but I, I uh, made a low-carb pizza the other day and didn't burn up the kitchen, uh, uh, you know, for the longest time, I thought the smoke detector was the uh, kitchen timer. <laughs> right? so, but that's not true. I found that out. Uh, but anyway, uh, check, uh, you know, scroll down my feed uh, later and you'll see this. Uh, I put the whole recipe there, too. You, if I can do this, folks, you cannot mess this up. If you mess this up, just never talk to me again because you're so pitiful. <laughs> Because right. if I can uh, cook something and make it edible, uh, you can. All right, let's go to the news. Uh, bag. Uh, now, <laughs> this one, this is not right, folks. A caretaker uh, of a hundred year old man was filmed performing a sexual dance for this uh, hundred year old man in the, in the old folks' home. <laughs> and. She got arrested, she got fired and arrested for it. And I'm thinking, what? If I'm ever 100 years old and can still enjoy a strip tease, you better bring it on, baby. <laughs> yeah, she actually got, here's, Brittany Fultz is her name. She's 26 years old. Uh, <laughs> Roberta says, I love edible cooking. <laughs> when you're cooking dinner for Walt, that's his new German Shepherd. Uh, <laughs> Brittany, uh, she pleaded not guilty. Wait till you hear what they charged her with. <laughs> Gross sexual imposition. <laughs> uh, uh, sexual positions? Okay, I can get that. But imposition? No, you are not imposing on me. <laughs> if I'm 100 years old, if I can even still see you, do it, baby. <laughs> I won't testify against you. Oh, that's not right, I'll tell you. All right, uh, speaking of sex, a Swedish politician, this is real, <laughs> wants workers to get paid for sex breaks. <laughs> this is true. You know, you know, they have perks like free lunches and ping pong tables and massages. <laughs> this is a new one here. Um, uh, Tom, uh, Keith says, Tom, are you still training WordPress stuff? Yeah, we have a course on it. And uh, when you get it, you also get uh, time to talk to my geeks if you want. Uh, ping list. Uh, I, I haven't updated the ping list, and we're not doing much ping list stuff anymore. So I don't think we've updated that. Um, okay, so, <laughs> so anyway, um, this guy named Eric Muskos, he's a local council member for over Tornea in northern Sweden, he believes couples in the country do not get enough quality <laughs> quality time together. <laughs> Roberta says, maybe your staff needs those breaks. <laughs> I need those <laughs> breaks. Uh, he said, the 42-year-old politician cited the sex uh, health benefits of sex as the primary reason for the paid break. Okay, so all right, I get all of this so far, but <laughs> like any any bill proposed, there's going to be critics, right? Well, <laughs> listen to this one. The critics have suggested that enforcing the policy would be difficult because some people would lie <laughs> and go take a walk instead of having <laughs> sex. <laughs> 
Oh, how t that would be so terrible. They wouldn't. They'd be freeloading on the job instead of porking somebody. <laughs> oh man. Now um, there's a a young lady named. This is real. Named Jazz Jennings. She is uh, reported to be one of the youngest outed uh, transgendered persons. And they're actually making a transgender doll. It looks just like her. But they're, here's the, my problem I have with it. They're calling it the first transgender doll. This is not true. There is no way that's true. And if you don't believe me, I dare anybody out here to find me a G.I. Joe that has a dick. <laughs> you take the... Fatigues off, there is no dicks on G.I. Joe. <laughs> right, so hers is not the first <laughs> doll. <laughs> now, here's another real story. It's called Kung Fu Granny. And uh, put your comments in there. If you think I'm an idiot, you can say that too. But put your website. I'll give you a shout out. Please hit your share button so more people are subjected to this ridiculous <laughs> crap that I, I spew. Um, but anyway, uh, last piece of news, Kung Fu Granny keeps the town safe and she's 94 years old. Her father started her in Kung Fu when she was four years old and she's been practicing ever since. Um, her son said she has ne in her whole life never been to the hospital, never take a vitamin or supplement or drugs of any kind, 94. And... Um, According to the Shanghai News, she encountered three robbers. Three people were trying to rob her. Three men. She took out two of them like boom, and the other one ran because <laughs> she's 94 years old. And uh, uh, she's a star of social media. She chops her own wood. Her husband died a couple years ago. She cooks for the entire village and she still, her eyes are good enough, she can thread a needle. Amazing. Kung Fu Granny, you can look her up, 94. Good for her. All right, let's go to the scam bag where we find what? The scumbags. So, um, this is called a registration scam. Um, this is uh, what's going on lately where people are, uh, let's see, uh, Oh, yeah. Uh, Roberto Candelaria <clears throat> says, free sponsorship e-course at Sponsor101.com. He's one of my students and also one of the best experts in the country on sponsorship. So, uh, Sponsor101.com. Um, so, anyway, if you register for any, um, any kind of event, a seminar, your association meeting, anything... Somehow the scammers are getting um, a hold of the registration list. And then they're spoofing a website that's maybe close to the original website. And they're contacting you uh, and then offering you a VIP upgrade. Well, if you buy this, the money's going straight in their pocket, and it's they're not affiliated with the, the group or association at all. So they're, you're just going to give them that money, and they're going to say bye-bye. And they'll close up shop and everything and disappear, because these are usually one-shot deals if it's an association meeting once a year. They'll just, as soon as they can get as much money as they can, they'll just disappear off the face of the earth. So um, be careful. So I said, you want to be a VIP? Make sure... If somebody calls you or contacts you to upgrade you at a, something you really signed up for, <clears throat> you go directly to the real website or call the real organization and see if this is real because uh, I don't want to see you get robbed. All right. Your self-defense tip. I want you to go with the flow. Now, that doesn't mean I want you to... Uh, let somebody handcuff you or tape your hands together and, and go ahead and get in the car without fighting if they're going to take you somewhere. That's an absolute no-no. You don't go with the flow. 
If somebody's going to take you somewhere, you fight it out, you scream, you bite, you kick, you, you know, it doesn't matter what you do. Because if you go, you're dead. And, and you're going to be dead in a worse way than if you fought it out right there. <laughs> Sorry, so don't go. So that's what I'm not talking about, going with the flow. Um, hey, thanks for sharing. Thank you very much, Roberto, and two others, it says. I don't, can't see who else did. Um, what I'm talking about is if, if, some, if you're in a face-to-face -face confrontation with somebody, or face-to-back confrontation with somebody, and let's say we're face-to-face, -face, if they go to pull you, uh, they're pro uh, you know, if they're, pro if they're going to do that, they're probably not going to do that to me. They're probably going to do that to a diminutive girl or something where they're much bigger, stronger, and try to pull you. If they're going to come after me, they're going to try to hit me. They're not going to try to pull me. All right? Um, so the natural reaction is to pull back. Well, if a 200-plus pound person is pulling a 100-plus pound person, you know what? Guess what? It's going towards the 200-pound person anyway, right? So you're not doing yourself any good by resisting. And also, you're creating more distance between you two, which distance can be your friend, but not in this case, because they got a hold of you. So if somebody's going to pull you, let's say you all are, grab me, and I'm a... I'm a diminutive girl. I don't have anything to that can my feminine bring my feminine side out. But if 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 you're you and you're pulling me towards you, I'm gonna go with it. And if your hands are tied up, guess what isn't your whole face? And I'm gonna fuck you up in your face and dig your eyes out and keep you going backwards. Because if I can get a big person going backwards. That's uh, and and I'm going forwards, or you're going forwards. You got the the uh, the upper hand at that point, okay? So and you're and you're kind of doubling your power because your power, you're jumping into them and they're pulling you into them. So it's like uh, two trains hitting, boom. Except they're gonna uh, get the bad end of it because their hands are tied up and their face is open. Um, now, if they have both of your hands, that's a headbutt time. You have to learn how to headbutt. And if you're shorter than them, that's when it's the best headbutt. If you're taller than a person, that's harder to headbutt. But you use the top of your head and hit it into uh, above your eyes. Hey, Luz, how are you? Hey, Ward. And then you hit below their eyes with this part of your head and... Uh, Blood will spurt out probably, their eyes will water, and you just keep scratching and clawing and then run like hell, all right? Um, so, uh, yeah, there's Warren is with GetInstaFollowing.com, and that is his uh, site. He's the uh, best Instagram expert I know. Uh, strategist, excuse me, not expert, strategist. That's what he calls himself. Uh, okay, so anyway, go with the flow. If somebody's pulling you backwards... Um, if you know, if you can feel they're coming, no, I want you to you know, hunker down forward and, and put your shoulders up, protect you from getting choked out. But if, uh, if they've got you going, just keep going. Boom. Just go backwards, headbutt them from behind and, uh, hammer, throw your hips to one side, hammer fist them in the groin. All right. But if you, if you just try to resist force against force, you're not helping yourself, and they're going to win anyway. All right, so go with the flow. All right, what's your Internet tip here? Um, uh, Internet tip is a, is a service called CoPromote. Uh, this is where you can put content of yours up, and other people can put it on their blogs. It's usually blog postings is what it mostly is. And then you can... Uh, take material from them and put it on your blog. So a couple things. As long as it's good stuff, it saves you from writing a blog post that day. But more than that is when you put it on, let's say you have 5,000 Twitter followers. So when you take their content and put it on your blog or your Twitter, Twitter feed, you get 5,000 points. And then when somebody else... Um, 
put yours on their site, it subtracts from your point. So if they have 3,000 followers, it takes 3,000 out of your thing, but you get exposed to 3,000 of their people. See? So you're basically helping each other out. And I, I'm pretty sure it has a, a feature where you can pay because I'm pretty particular about what I want to put out or who I want to promote. But I think I, uh, uh, you can pay and you don't have to put anything out. You can just buy points and then other people put your stuff out. So uh, check it out. Co-promote. Uh, it's free to sign up. And... Um, and then if you, uh, you'll probably see Lakia operating it for me and some of my stuff up there. And so put it up there and you'll get points for it. Hey, Holly, how are you? Nice to see you here. Put your uh, websites in there. Um, okay, speaking tip. Uh, this is a uh, involvement technique. You know, if you've ever seen me speak, you know, I got shit happening all over the place. Uh, people don't want to go to the bathroom because they never know. What's, what I'm going to do next, all right? And that's part of the deal. That's by, by design. Uh, but one of the things that I do is an involvement technique. is called dueling flip charts. So let's say uh, we had a, uh, uh, we're doing a, some event and there's a clear plus and a minus to something maybe the company is supposed to do. They're, they're deciding whether they're going to uh, build in Mexico or build in Michigan. So you get two volunteers on stage. You have flip charts on both sides of the stage uh, if, uh, and um, big ones if you need it, depending on the size of the audience. If the audience is too big, uh, you have to tell the camera guy or, you know, if there's multiple cameras, they can, uh, you tell them ahead of time. I, I always tell the videographer what I'm going to do so they can get the shot and I don't surprise them. So uh, if it's a big crowd, you want cameras on those people, and then they'll iMag it on the big screen. But if it's a regular size crowd or small crowd, then they can see the flip chart. So you got two flip charts. you got one person from the audience over here, one over here, and you're moderating the thing. You say, okay, what are some of the reasons we're supposed to, uh, uh, we should go to Mexico, and let's yell them out. And they start yelling them out. And I say, okay, Joe, you write them down on this flip chart. And then... I said, okay, well, why should we stay in Mich Michigan? And then everybody's yelling stuff out, and we put it over on this flip chart. And then we um, uh, go back to Mexico. You think of any more for Mexico? Yeah, yeah, okay, put it over here. So you go back and forth like that, and it's just a lot of fun. People are hooting and hollering, but you don't want to lose control. So I usually have some kind of noisemaker that I told them, hey, it's when I blow this thing, <laughs> you know, shut up. <laughs> you know, or I don't say shut up if it's a corporate crowd, I do to a public, <laughs> but, but uh, corporate guys say, okay, you got to be quiet when you hear this noise. <clears throat> hey, Stephen, how are you? Nice to, nice to see you, man. Um, so anyway, it's dueling flip charts. It's just a lot of fun. Whenever you see something where they're on uh, or left and right, uh, it's a, a, a technique you can uh, suggest and do. And every time people see their, so am I still... Still there? Hello, hello. Did it quit on me again? Anybody? You out there? Somebody, say something if you're still there. Just type it in your comments. Let me know if I hear me. Okay, I'm back now. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, if this thing cuts out, I'll switch to my iPhone. But uh, if this thing cuts out on me again, it's the last two times it, the iPad has just quit and we had to switch to... Uh, switch to the uh, the phone. I'm going to quit using this thing. Okay, so let me uh, get back to where I was. Alright, so uh, did, did everybody hear the dueling flip chart tip? Put it in there if you did, please. Type it in there. 
The dueling flip charts. Did you see that? I can wait you out. Okay, great. Thank you. Barbara Ann says, nope. Didn't see the... Stephen Price says, yes. Okay, so... Uh, okay, they heard the flip chart tip. So, um, good. Okay, so let's go to the A-hole of the week. The A-hole of the week. What a jerk. This guy's name is... Uh, hey, Tracy, how are you? Thank you. Uh, the A-hole of the week is David Perry. Hey, Tim. Yeah, Tim. Uh, all right, I'll do, I'll do the dueling flip chart real quick again. All right, you put two flip charts on stage if you have like a pro and con or something that you're talking about. And you get people to yell from the audience all the stuff that goes on one flip chart. And you have a volunteer from the audience writing it down. And then you got a volunteer on the other flip chart writing the cons down. And then you talk to them, you fight it out, and you get the audience screaming and... And that's the dueling flip charts. It's a lot of fun, a lot of hoopla, a lot of screaming, and uh, really keeps people's attention. Okay, so back to A-Hole of the Week. David Perry is the chair of the commun of communication studies at St. Joseph's College. And he was speaking at, a, at an event on campus about the election results. And he said he's not sympathetic. Hey, Christina. Um... Tracy, how you doing? Uh, not sympathetic towards white voters who make more than 50000 a year and voted for Trump. <laughs> he says, and that those in attendance shouldn't open their hearts to those voters. It's like, what the fuck? Um, uh, Perry also said that Trump's election was an act of violence and that people were going to die because of what happened. And... Uh, yeah, hey, Christina, <laughs> yeah, one eye on me and one eye on the Academy Awards. So they're probably getting, I wonder if they're getting political. I'm sure they are tonight. Uh, they have, to, all the Hollywood stuff has been political. Um, but anyway, this guy's an asshole. So, uh, and now they're claiming all oh, the, the Fox News mischaracterized his statements. And <laughs> the statements are pretty clear. The guy's a fucking asshole. And, uh, uh, I, I, I'm coming out with something, folks. I, I, I'm going to mention it again. I don't want to come out with it all uh, totally right now, but if there's any uh, of you out there that are considered one of the deplorables, um, okay, thanks, Christina. If you're one of the deplorables, I'm starting uh, something that could go really, really big, a conservative thing, but I don't, uh, you know, I don't want you if you, if you're, you know, if you can't handle a little heat from political backlash. Now, if you want to stay behind the scenes and do some research for me, uh, <laughs> the Academy Awards are so bad, I turn to you. <laughs> Thanks, Stephen. Oh, that's, a, that's, really, that's really something. I beat the Academy Awards, at least for one person in California. <laughs> or two, maybe. Um, so if you if you're just in volunteering and you are deplorable and if you're not if you're a fake deplorable we have to murder you. Uh, <laughs> I know some deplorables. <laughs> yeah, if you're a fake deplorable or a double agent deplorable, then we have to kill you. All right, but if you're a real deplorable and you want to volunteer for something that could turn into a paid thing if the funding hits as big as I think it might hit. Uh, so email me at orders at anteon.com, orders at anteon.com, and I will give you some details. Okay, so um, anyway, David Perry's the asshole of the week, and uh, you know, and he's a teacher at St. Joseph's College, and they were asking, they were even asking the kids about this, and the kids were saying, "Whoa, that's that's not uh, <laughs> it's a fake deplorable." <laughs> uh, uh, that's not, I mean, uh, all these professors are indoctrinating the students and the students are weak and going along with it. I'd be a deplorable Canadian division. Hey, we'll take that. You're safer than the ones here uh, to get people, people all they claimed that they were going to Canada, but they never went. We, we begged them to go, but they wouldn't go after Trump won. Uh, but uh, yeah, so these uh, 
professors is like they're, they're ninety plus percent um, ninety plus percent liberal and just off the deep end. I don't mind somebody being liberal, but these just people are just fucking morons and and uh, and the kids are weak minded uh, snowflakes and uh, they're just being indoctrinated rather than taught and um, you know so it's a it's a shame. So anyway, he's the asshole of the week. Now, let's get to the stuff I, I like better than talking about assholes. Um, yeah, and uh, those of you who emailed me, uh, I'll get to it when I uh, uh, when we finish tonight. Uh, but my heroes of the week, the first hero actually is a Hollywood guy. His name is Robert uh, Davi or Davi, D-A-V-I. And you would not recognize his name, probably, but I guarantee... Uh, you would uh, recognize his face because he's been in uh, James Bond movies and Die Hard and, I mean, just hundreds of these things. So look him up on IMDb and you'll see, oh, yeah, I know that guy. Um, but he, he came out and he went on Fox News and said, uh, I think all these people, uh, you know, it's saying bring the refugees on. He says, I think they should all get tickets uh, to the Oscars. He says there's 3,500 seats at the Oscars. At least 2,000 of them could be refugees and illegal aliens. <laughs> he's, he's like mocking all these celebrity buddies. And, uh, and he said, oh, and the Vanity Fair after party, they should all get tickets to that for free. And... Uh, <laughs> He's going on and on about all this stuff. And uh, the Hollywood people are, you know, it's just, they're being hypocritical. You know, they're surrounded by guards and opulence. And the, the uh, refugees are not going to be in their neighborhood. So it's easy for them to say, oh, yeah, bring them on. Yeah, well, fuck you. All right. So he's basically saying fuck you to all his Hollywood buddies. He's he's famous enough and in, in, uh He's probably not going to lose any work or even cares at this point in his career. So he's one. Uh, now, our an we have an animal hero of the week, and then we get to our big hero of the week. Um, this is a, a, a dog named Tilly, uh, and, and his best friend, Phoebe, were lost for over a week in the woods. And... Uh, People were almost were kind of giving up on that they're just gone. They you know, they were gone for over a week. Well, Phoebe fell into a um, cement cistern and could not climb out of it. And Tilly, his uh, Phoebe's best her best friend, would not leave her. He stayed right there, only leaving. A little bit every day to run to try to get the neighbor's attention and get him to follow him back. It was almost like Lassie kind of thing, right? Finally, after a week, one of the neighbors noticed that, hey, that's the dog everybody's been looking for, and saw it run into the woods. And they called the search party, and they went and found uh, Tilly is sitting right next to Phoebe. Neither one of them had eaten in a week. and uh, But the, the dog would not leave his best friend. And that uh, just I just love these animals, I'll tell you. So that's uh, Tilly. Uh, that's all I know about her. Her name is Tilly, uh, is our Animal Hero of the Week. All right, now our Person Hero of the Week. Now this, this person I'm going to tell you about first is not the Hero of the Week, uh, but it has to do with the Hero of the Week. Lucille Conlon Horn weighed barely two pounds when she was born. This is a perilous size for any infant, especially when you were born in 1920. Well, the doctor, and she had a twin sister that died at birth. So the doctors told her parents, hold off on the funeral because Lucille's not going to make it either. So they'd have a, a dual funeral. Um, but she ended up living to be 96 years old because of one person. His name was 
Dr. Martin County, C-O-U-N-E-Y, Martin County. Um, and he was a sideshow doctor at Coney Island. <laughs> all right, now, this is not a bad thing, all right? It sounds bad. It sounds like he's a snake oil salesman, right? But he was uh, trying to get public, the public and the rest of the medical community to believe in incubators for babies that were born prematurely. There was no support for it at that time. If you were... Well, here I am, folks. So that's the last time I'm going to do the iPad because it's it's quit on me three weeks in a row. I'll wait till people get back and then I'll finish my story. Hello, hello. Hello, it's me. I thought about us for a long, long time. Maybe I think too much, but something's wrong. All right, so I see people are coming back. All right, so that's the last time I'm going to use the iPad. It's quit on me three weeks in a row. I don't know if it's the iPad or what, but uh, naturally, hey, Jeff, this uh, cell phone is the latest, greatest, so it's never quit on me. So, back to my story. Um, we're talking about Dr. Martin County was a sideshow uh, baby doctor. And he was trying to get uh, people interested in incubators because he wanted to save uh, kids. Hey, Jeff. And there was no support for this in those days. Uh, people were just, if you had a baby that was... Uh, Premature, it was going to die, and that's the breaks. But he didn't want to charge the parents anything. So what he did was charge people to look at all these babies. So he would go to fairs and sideshows and things like that, and he would <clears throat> charge people to look at these little tiny babies, two pounds, three pounds, to, to be able to finance his um, work with premature babies and incubators. And so they estimate that he, uh, he had what they called a baby farm. And in the years he was doing this, he died in 1950. In the years he was doing this, uh, he... He had 8,500 children at the baby farm, and he saved 7,500 of them. 7,500 children. It's not known how many of them are still alive today, but um, what a guy. I mean, just, you know, probably ostracized by the rest of the medical community at the time, but he had his incubator, and uh, he... Um, Man, he saved 70, you know, estimated 7,500 of the 8,500 babies he saved. And and he's considered, I think they call that neonatal. Um, yeah, he's considered the pioneer of neonatal technology. Um, and, um, and until about the early 1940s when incubators became commonplace in hospitals. So, um what a guy, right? What a guy. So glad uh, that he was on this earth and that he was able to take a stand. And he was willing to do anything to save these babies. And we, let's think of that. Set up at a sideshow at Coney Island or a fair or any place where he could get uh, interest in this so he, so he wouldn't have to charge the parents. Just a, a modern-day male Florence Nightingale, I guess. So... So, um, so anyway, that's uh, the show tonight. Uh, I'm not going to do it with that iPad anymore. I'm going to this week. I have to figure out another way. I, I'm, I'm trying to avoid going to that OBS software because, um, you know, Facebook has rolled out some software, but I understand it's not great. But um, we'll try to get this so we're not interrupted uh, next week. So. Um, 
like always, I want you to stay home if you can. I love being home. And I want you to stay safe. Stay safe. It's a, it can be a dangerous world out there. And make some money while you're at it. All right. We'll catch you next week. Bye-bye.